Hello, this is Marcus Idel from Avatarium, and uh, you're listening to the Blog of Rock. Welcome to The Block of Rock, your hard rock and heavy metal podcast music magazine. My name is Uwe Lerch and I will take you backstage to the rock stars. Of course we chat about the music that connects us all. About new records, about life plans and what used to be. But we also talk about the people behind it. What inspired and motivated them and what kind of rockstar tips do they have for you out there. In the show notes... That is a description of this episode that you are hearing about right now. You will find a central link for all usage that will also take you to my official Facebook group. I would be happy if we get to know each other there. Are you ready for the start? Well, then come with me. Today everything revolves around Avatarium from Stockholm. Ever since her first self-titled album in 2013, the magical voice of frontwoman Jenny Ann Smith has enchanted me. From my point of view, the band has made an incredible metamorphosis over a total of four albums and has filled up their compositions of deep, dark, heavy, cold sounds of Black Sabbath type with more and more warm rays of sunshine. Just have a look at all the acoustic songs on the Avatarium YouTube channel, you will be very surprised. Their latest album, The Fire Along For, was released last November, with which the band opened a completely new niche, referred as Dark Gospel by themselves. If you want to know more about this, I recommend to watch the explanatory video of the song Rubicon, which went online a few days ago. 2020 could have been the year of Avatarium. Two warm-up shows were played in Sweden, an extreme live schedule with festival highlights such as Wacken or Summer Breeze, just to name a few, should follow. But these plans were also lost in the wake of the pandemic. Almost by chance, one of the two initial shows in Stockholm was recorded with cameras. I was allowed to watch this video completely and can tell you that the concert is an absolutely eye-catcher, not only due to the historical location from the 19th century. For over 90 minutes, a dark doom thunderstorm breaks loose, in an extreme contrast with almost folk-like ballads, soulful bluesy guitar solos, a lot of 70s Hammond organ and above all the magical voice of Jenny Ann Smith. And it is exactly this experience that rings your doorbell now, because the concert film of the year for me is available as a video download. You can secure the show for 10 euros only, you will get the link from me later. To keep the tension a little longer, we'll first hear what Avatarium mastermind Markus Jodell told me about this project. Hello Markus, how are you doing in Stockholm? Hello, I'm fine, I'm fine. We got some warm uh, weather, finally. So the end of the summer seems to be a little warmer. You're looking great, so to say, for everybody <laughs> who's not seeing you. You're looking really relaxed. So have you been on vacation or have you been in the studio working the past weeks? Yeah, we actually been uh, on some kind of vacation, like for a month. Uh, me and Jan Jan and our kid, two and a half year old kid. And, so, but but it's it's always you know it's never total vacation for me. I always do do stuff. Yeah, you came out with the breaking news that Avatarium is coming to your living room in a few days. So you're releasing exactly. a concert, a home video. Yeah, so we we're releasing a, a concert movie from the show we did uh, earlier this year uh, in uh, in Stockholm at the really really beautiful venue Nalen, which is a really old and uh, beautiful looking. Uh, venue so and then it was recorded uh, with five cameras and uh, multi-track you know audio recording so we, we were able to make a concert movie out of it with a great sound and a great film you know the, the film is looks really nice so so we were happy so we've been working quite hard with that uh because Dan Quist made a great audio mix and, uh, and I, I went to his studio like when he was almost done and we spent when we spent the day together to make you know all the small final adjustments to make it even better and uh and Magnus Dian Winkel has been working with the with the film and we also both me and Jan Jan has been there and uh, watching but they've been doing Magnus Dian Winkel from Black Box they've been doing a great 
great work. So everybody's been working, spending a lot of uh, time and putting a lot of effort to make this as good as possible and, you know, to kind of make people who watch it feel the atmosphere and the vibe that was in the hall in the, at, at the venue that, that evening. So, so we're really happy with it. I'm proud. I talked to a keyboard player yesterday, actually, Rick and Nilsson. We were both a little bit surprised how how well we <laughs> play and perform because it was the first show uh, we did on what was supposed to be the tour 2020. And of course, it, we just made two shows because then COVID-19 pandemic bursted out. So, but at least it was recorded the first show and, and luckily we did a great performance. So we're happy about that. So it's not easy because I remember seeing Avatarion quite a few times, but uh, you changed the lineup in between there and back. And mm -hmm. I was really surprised. I saw the show already and I must say that this is the best lineup I saw from Avatarium. Mm -hmm. um, because you. You, you seemed like playing together for ages, but it was one yeah. of your first shows. Yeah, really. But, but one of the reasons actually is that we are all good friends and we, we know we've been friends for a long time. So how about the drummer and Rick and Nilsson, keyboard player, we, we've known each other and played a lot together, you know, in different jam sessions and in different, you know, constellations and stuff. So we know each other very well. But it's, it's also like with some people you just get a good chemistry. It's like, you know, you, you can't force that thing. We just you put some people together and if, if you're really really lucky there's a certain chemistry that kind of makes some magic that you can't you know you can't predict it and but we are very happy and all, everybody in the band we really feel that i've been talking to everybody and so that's why we're all very happy and proud about this live concert and the same with with mats you know our, our bass players so everybody's like able to put their own personality in how they perform but also they make you know the big avatar sound together so so, we, you know, we're very lucky. I really hope we can have this band together for a long time because it feels like coming home to me. So the whole concert is called One Evening with Avatarium. And mm -hmm. I think it really showed a great band which is on their on the best uh, performance yet. And it was just the first show of the tour. It was crazy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy you say that. I've, I've, I was quite nervous when I went to, to Victor to... to uh, listen to the sound mix because i haven't listened to the whole show because i always i have a, you know it's always when you hear, listen to yourself it's like oh you know there you, you hear all the small little mistakes and stuff and uh, so, so i have a, i i don't usually like to listen to my live recordings actually so i was very nervous when i went there but then when we listened like each song was like wow this sounds pretty good and then the next song was like wow <laughs> and you know and then it gets almost it gets better and better so uh, each song so sometimes you're lucky and <laughs> perform perform well but as said we we, are, we all feel very comfortable with each other and also the audience actually that evening it was very warm and you know loving and great atmosphere at the in the venue and uh, as you may will see if you watch the concert film it's it's a very beautiful event and uh, that also inspires I think. looks so, like an old cathedral or like a theater so what is this kind yeah. of venue is it it's not for rock it's not made for rock shows no, it's it's usually not like metal bands or rock bands usually don't play there because we, we watched uh, the the gospel uh, lady maybe state was there like a few years ago when we were like wow this is such a nice venue and then we were asked by Trip and Danger Productions who book us in Sweden if we wanted to play there so we felt like that's a great idea and um, it's actually I think the the house was built in 1888 so it's a very old house. And, and the venue used to be the, like in, from the early 30s until late 60s. It was, you know, almost every, you know, cool uh, kind of culture event in Stockholm, you know, happened there. And it was a lot of, a lot of the jazz bands. And it was like people went there to dance. People went there to listen to jazz music or later pop music and that kind of stuff. So, so it's, it's a very legendary venue. So, it's, you know, sometimes when you get into a place, you feel, you know, the history and the vibes of it. So that's the kind of probably also helped us, you know, with the, the performance. So I, I'm, I'm very happy that we went there and we did it there. What I like on the show is that is there's a certain kind of story, or I would say a climax. So you start very, let's say, dark. Uh, Jenny Ann is, is wearing uh, some kind of a cape, like a like priestess, the high priestess of dark mm -hmm. gospel music. And then she's turning into a... You know, she having, she's having a, a white shirt afterwards at the end. 
and it's it's got more lights and it's got more organ inside so the whole concert has a kind of story was this kind of a concept what you intended to 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 play with yeah we we you know it's it's always nice to that a, that a concert is like an album you know it's, it's like that you have some kind of a story and and of course you want the ending to be like a climax so um, so yeah we tried to do that and i'm, I'm glad you <laughs> noticed and that you liked it so it, i think it's went out pretty well <laughs> what i've seen already are some great reaction you you just released the first video officially on your uh, avatarium youtube channel which is the sky at the bottom of the seas yeah. um it's been a track from your previous album um which i right. think in a live version really worked much better with all the organs inside and as a kind of duel between you as a guitarist and the organ from mm -hmm. Ricard. It sounded a bit like some people wrote, noticed, uh, wrote commentary like, this is the best Uriah Heep track they never wrote. Uh, but it has <laughs> kind of 70s vibes. And uh, this yeah. is the track which really works live in this, in this, this video. And I think it captured also the, the atmosphere of the, of the whole concert really well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah you know, that, that song is, it's written by Leif Edling, the, the great Leif Edling. And, and uh, it, it is, of course, really inspired by Uriah Heep. But uh, since he's a very clever songwriter, he always kind of uh, gets his own vibe in, into the songs anyway. So you can really feel the, um, the kind of, what do you say, like hectic uh, pulse and uh, almost like the, the band had like too much cocaine right before <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, you know, which we actually didn't. But Talking about Leif, um, he was also the one somehow who, who started the whole idea of Avatarium um, yeah. beside of Candlemas. But I felt on the last album, his influence was uh, much less to hear. The last album, The Fire Long For, which you have released last November, sounded yeah. a bit different. It sounded more lighter than the more the darker sounds which you had in the beginning this is yeah maybe now you are more, more writing the material on your own yeah on the on the last album we wrote me Janian wrote six songs late wrote three songs so I, I guess it's a little of course it's different and it, it doesn't make sense for us to try to copy Leif Edling's songwriting and you know we're very proud of each album we did we've done this far and we've been writing some songs earlier as well but now it's more on the last album it's, it's we like write most of the material and i think you know it go, i think goes both ways also because it's the sound is quite heavy and you know big and fat on the new album but we also try to blend in you know some different harmonic you know things and maybe a little bit a little bit more melodic maybe and uh, I'm, I'm not sure you know we, we have our, our influences from like the doors or the uh crosspieces and nash and neil young and that kind of stuff and, and then of course we blend it with you know the black sabbath influence and that kind of stuff as well so but but you know that's one of the things that i think i learned a little bit from Leif Edling is that to always try to be personal when you write instead of just you know try to copy something totally and i think we really achieved to find a sound that really suits us well and if, if we were supposed to continue with avatarium it, it was really important for us to to write you know most of the material because otherwise we we just be you know we love we all have candle mess of course and what the latest songwriting but it's it's important for us to develop develop as musicians and as songwriters and everything and artists to be more involved in the, in the songwriting we've, we've been doing you know the arrangements has been always from the band anyway very, very much of course Leif will also be very involved in it but you know we a lot of the songs like person coffins and these kind of songs they sounded very different when we did the first demo and then we kind of did the avatarium thing with them so we've always been doing that and in one way it's as much work <laughs> to write uh, another uh, your own song as to kind of rearrange you know uh, live songs <laughs> if you know what i mean I, I can imagine i see that uh, especially on the last album you did a lot of uh, acoustic stuff which you always had you know when i remember your first shows uh, also mm -hmm. at rock heart festival in 2015 
uh, Jenny Ann played also acoustic guitar and we yeah. see it also, by the way, at this show, um, One Evening with Avatarium. But I think on the last album you had more songs, which you also performed later on acoustically. I remember you played for German Telekom, this uh, concert which was being available uh, as stay-at-home concert. You did yeah. also some great acoustics on your YouTube channel. By the way, this is something which you really should focus on to play more of these acoustic things, <laughs> some of your original songs. But you recently, yeah. you just mentioned Neil Young. Uh, you also played a great Neil Young version of uh, one of his songs, which was astonishing to me to hear it by a band like Avatarium. But it shows really the, the development of the band that you don't really just focus on one niche because the Avatarium sound is mixed by some lots of ingredients. Those could be yeah. more also folk oriented, but it could be yeah. also blues oriented and they still have this kind of candle mass, black Sabbath, doom, dark roots. Yeah, and that's like we talk like Black Sabbath and and uh, Led Zeppelin, whatever, all these old you know, giants. So I, what I, one thing I always love with them is when when they're blues to the hard rock or metal thing and and also um what what you say blues and some old school rock and roll actually <laughs> you know that's right yeah so so um, and and I always love that as well and then you know when you've been working with music for quite a long time i always since I was a kid i was I was always interested in different genres so and and um, I find new music, you know, every month or every week, and sometimes it's new stuff. And but usually I dig dig backwards, and I find like a lot of because it's so much music. Some some people say like, why why do you only listen to old music? I don't only listen to old music, but there's a lot of old music to find that is great as well. So. Um, so I, I, I was always interested in that, and it's also interesting as a producer to hear the recordings they did and everything. And so um, you know, and, and and then you find something that you kind of okay, I, this talks to me. I, I like I like this, and then you try to get these things into the music you write yourself. And we have a term, we we have a style, we have a sound, but it's still we always every album sounds a little bit different so, so we have a kind of a window to be creative and bring in what we like but always try to have our own avatarium id in there so that's always always the challenge and that's what makes it interesting and so so what will be the next i'm sure in between the last year um when you finish the last album i'm sure you don't only sit at home watching netflix series but i'm sure you are very productive working on new material not only yeah. acoustically uh, which you showed already on on your youtube channel but i'm sure you work also on new materials so what what yeah, can we, we expect actually I, I, I wish i had time to watch some netflix series <laughs> because sometimes i said it another day to a friend like i would, I would just just want to spend three days doing nothing watching netflix series but the, there will be time for that later, hopefully. And that's something you can do in a tour bus. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, so, so uh, yeah, so we, re we really uh, we're writing new material, actually, at the moment. And the way we're starting to get some really nice things and ideas. And uh, now we just need to, <clears throat> to make songs out of it. So we have a lot of ideas and we have a lot of thoughts about how the next album should sound and everything. And uh, that's one of the things we work on. We're also working, since we can't tour and, or, you know, and meet our audience, we really started to be more focused on the social medias. So our YouTube channel has been like, we haven't been doing anything with that for years, but now we've just started with our YouTube channel. So um, if, you, if you're interested in Avatarium, you should go there and subscribe, because it's gonna be like our Avatarium TV, where we're gonna, you know, have, both, of course, official videos, but also clips from the studio or, you know, some old clips and some new clips. And we also have this thing where we, it's called What's Hidden in the Song, where we kind of go through some of the songs and you can listen solo some of the things, you know, like whatever, you know, percussion or vocals or whatever we do that you might not be aware of when you just listen to the whole song. So we have a lot of these small things that 
both fun to work with and it's also a way to communicate and you know give something to to our listeners that really inspires they because we really get inspired from mail and messages people write to us and i noticed there's a lot of people that really get moved by our, by our music and then these are the things that have made us make the decision to continue because if we, i talked to Yanian a lot about how should we do with avatar shall we because we love to do it, but it's also, you know, it's a lot of work to, to work with it. But when you, people write like this, that song helped me through a difficult time in life and all this kind of stuff that people write to us, that then you feel like, okay, this is something important. And we reach out, people understand what we are doing and they, and they get moved by it. And, and then, of course, that gives us energy to continue. So it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing and we really want to, we are, we are really inspired right now to continue with what we're doing. So please carry on. I want to hear a fifth <laughs> Avatarium album next year. And I hope you're going to come over finally when the pandemic is over. But before yeah. you are coming to our living room, as I said yeah. a before. So before, let me ask you, um, the whole concert will be available like a ticket and you purchase it, and then you can not only stream it, but also download it to copy it on your own. Yeah. So this is the exactly. idea. Exactly, exactly. So you can download it, you will have it forever. And uh, you can also download like a cover, so you can make your own DVD if you want to, which, which is very nice. And, uh, we, and uh, the thing is, this, this concert is, once again, we're very happy that we, and, and feel very lucky that we uh, were able, that this was recorded because a lot of people do the live streams and that is a great way to reach out but this is a concert filmed in front of an audience right before the outburst of the COVID-19 so you, you can see the show that we were supposed to tour with uh, in 2020 we were supposed to play Wacken, Summer Breeze, a lot of nice festivals and we were also supposed to do our own tour and uh, so, so this is a chance for you to see the tour that unfortunately it didn't happen but but you will see it in your living room and uh with a great sound it, and with a great uh video as well yeah thank you i'm glad you say that and so, so just crank up the volume and you know have a beer or a glass of wine or coca-cola whatever you want to <laughs> drink and uh you know collect your friends and uh, and you know and uh, hope have a good time what I really like about this, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of fortune for everybody because it's just, you won't believe, it's just 10 euro. So it's less than a ticket. It's even less than a CD or about the same price as a CD. And you will get the full show, almost 90 minutes with, uh, you know, all the it's best songs from, from yeah. all albums um, on, you know, with a great uh, performance at once. And I really can only suggest everybody who's listening to this podcast to, to have a look at it. Um, if you're unsure, you can go to the YouTube channel, of course, and watch already some clips of it before. You're releasing some of the clips already before, so people already can know what they can buy. And of course, yeah. at the other side, when you buy a ticket for the download, you support a band because this is something yeah. which also you know, helps you. Um, it helps you also to sustain this pandemic but you get a great concert as a as a gift in exchange so that's why i really suggest uh, all my listeners to have a look at it too yeah, i think it's a fair deal <laughs> thank you very much well, this was a commercial break <laughs> that's a commercial break. Well, thank you very much I'm very, I'm very happy that you that you like it and uh, i think it's uh, i think it's a fair deal and uh, it will uh, it, it, it will hopefully also bring in even a new, more fans and new new people to see Avatar. Because, you know, it's hard for us to, at this point, we, we wouldn't be able to go to, like, maybe South America this year anyway. So it's, it's a good way for people, like, over the seas to, to see a full show with Avatar. And, uh, and next time we tour, it's probably... We have a new album, then it's going to be another tour. And, uh, and, it, and it's also, you know, it's still always going to be different, you know, because we rehearsed and worked with this 
with these shows, you know, with the band and you do the arrangements and you make everything at that time. And I'm a term is like that. If we play like in a half a year or in a year next time, the songs are going to sound different because we always change small things and because that's how we are. <laughs> So. We are looking forward to welcome back to, to the live stages in 2021. Until then, I wish yeah. you a productive time in the studio. Let us Thank know you. when there is something new. Until then, we're going to watch your YouTube channel. And of course, we're going to watch the concert. Markus, um, thank you very much. My best thank regards you. to Jenny Ann. And okay. Taxa Miket. Thanks, you have to make it. Thank you very much. It was very nice to talk to you. You have got a taste now and want to invite Avatarium into your living room? Well, then you will find description of this episode, the so-called show notes, with a direct link to the page where you can download the complete video for only 10 euros. You even got a finished cover artwork to print out so that you can burn your very own DVD of it, kind of an official bootleg. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow me at the podcast dealer you trust so that you don't miss the next one. You will get the entire season as a free subscription service from Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Deezer, SoundCloud, YouTube, the Google Podcast Portal and, of course, via my homepage, theblockofrot.com. You can also listen to the stories that have been already published there because there is new food in here every week. And above all... Tell your friends and share the good news on social media. All right, then let's hear again next time. Until then, keep on rocking.